Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors again. Thought I'd put together this uh, short video, hopefully it'll be short, uh, just to show you a couple things I've come up with. One, um, we were talking about the last time this uh, 10 log hands two dual head printer and um, I have some plans to use the dual heads printing a single part but what I'm going to be doing is mixing filaments I'll have a PLA filament for example in extruder 1 and I may have a carbon fiber in extruder 2 or possibly even ABS and um, <clears throat> this way I will for example, I can set my bed temperature for PLA and print my first layer with PLA or my first couple layers with PLA. And then as I get on into the part, um, I can start adding some carbon fiber to it. See how it works or ABS or whatever, because I can set this, uh, these two heads that different temperatures. I can set one at 200 and the other one at 240. So that's some of the flexibility that I like about the dual head printer and as soon as I get a chance I'll be experimenting around with that a little bit and shoot some video of that and show you how that works out. The other thing I wanted to show you is this other printer. <clears throat> this little printer right here and I don't even know what it's called here the it's um <laughs> zing zang yin yang or something but <laughs> it's a it's a printer and i found it on amazon it um, was a relatively inexpensive printer you can go out to amazon and uh look this printer up it's $159. The thing that I kind of liked about it was that it had a 235 by 235 build plate, which works real well with my helping hand parts. This is the uh, glass plate from the ANET printers, 20, uh, 220 by 220. But if you um, put it on here, and I think you can probably see that there's quite a bit of difference in the build area going 235. So right now, this one, by the time you clamp down the glass plate on the A net, this part will run on there, but it's it's a pretty tight fit. And I thought, well, this one gives me a little more room. And I was thinking about possibly enlarging this. A little bit and this would allow that so I thought that might be a good idea it comes uh, the printers not a bad printer from what I can tell uh, the best thing about it there were four screws not counting the filament holder there were four screws and this is called a, a folding printer And there are two screws in each side of this vertical part that screw in here and hold it in place. When you unscrew those, this folds down. And it's a compact, I guess it would be good for a portable printer if you're going around demonstrating something um, to schools or other businesses or whatever. It would be real good for that because it is compact. You could carry it in a in a suitcase and then like I said all I had to do was fold it up and put the four screws in there and then attach the filament holder 
and uh, there are a couple um, zip ties holding the thing to prevent it from moving. I cut those zip ties loose and that was it. So this is one of the easiest printers. It's all about as easy as the Monoprice uh, Mini that just comes out of the box and starts printing. So that's a good advantage of it. Uh, the other thing, it does come with a glass plate and it has these nice little clips that aren't like the big bulky ones. They, they just barely go up on the glass giving you more of that print area available to you. And it does have dual uh, vertical y-axis motors back here. And that's very important, I think, when you get into to some of these printers because it will um, allow the thing, it doesn't put so much strain on one motor trying to uh, move that y-axis. It has um, a filament brake sensor. Um, it looks like it extrudes pretty good. The, the quality of the screen and the software uh, firmware in it is pretty good. Um, I'm going to do some more test printing of some parts on this thing. The only drawback on it so far is that it does not have resume print. And I don't know why. But um, resume print isn't everything. I have some other printers that don't have it and of course, if you have a UPS, um, that will uh, help alleviate the concern there because normally you're concerned about uh, intermittent power outages uh, where the lights flicker and go off for about a second. Just enough time for these power supplies to drop to the point to where the printer shuts down. And then once it's shut down, then uh, you have to manually restart it. And um, a lot of people talk about Octoprint and stuff. And there are some things like that out there that could probably help in a situation like that. But uh, I don't have a lot of power failures in this area or power glitches. So I think I could manage with that. I think I could um, have some UPS, small UPS, uh, hooked up to a couple of these printers enough to carry them through those little intermittent uh, flickers during a storm or something like that. Um, speaking of a storm, I've been working quite a bit on the... Uh, new print farm. I have another video out on that pretty soon. Uh, I did receive my uh, surge protector. Um, I've got a, they, I think the nickname for them is whole house surge protectors, but it's a surge protector that goes in your electrical panel and uh, uh, gets any, handles any surges of electricity coming through the power lines before they get to your computers and electronic equipment. And that works pretty good because then you don't have to worry about trying to have um, surge protectors on uh, your computers or have them plugged into a UPS with surge protection and so forth. Um, so those are a couple things. Again, I'll give you some more information on this printer other than that one thing, not having uh, resume print, um, it looks promising for that price, $159. So you might go out to Amazon, take a look at it, and see what you think. I thought it was worth investigating because the closest thing that I have to this is um, the... Um, ANET ET4 Pro. Well, I think that's enough for now. So until the next time, thank you for watching.